you know, and you know, trying to get my head together to come here today, I just went back and you know asked uh, our finance department to kind of go back and do a little bit of a survey, because again, I, I, I was, I just remembered kind of in overall when I first stepped into the office and looked at you know the nonprofit uh, funding that we were doing, uh, I thought, God, I know there's more than that, and you know, and, and sure enough, when I went back to say 2013, 2014, I saw that. At that time, we were funding only um, 10 different uh, nonprofits and outside uh, agencies uh, for a total of $178,000. And, you know, and so it's just raw numbers is all I was looking at. Uh, and then we flash forward here, you know, to, 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 uh, 10, uh, nine years uh, forward. Uh, in this past year, uh, just to give you an idea of the, of the breadth of the kind of funding that we're doing, and we everything from uh, the Blue Ribbon Commission, uh, the Cameron Art Museum, Cape Fear Community Land Trust, Coastal Horizon Center, Domestic Violence uh, Shelter and Services, uh, Feast Down East, Food Bank of Central uh, and Eastern North Carolina, GLOW, Good Shepherd, Kids Making It, Link, uh, Nourish NC, Phoenix Employment Services of Wilmington, Carousel Center, uh, Warm, YMCA, YWCA, none of those were being funded uh, when, you know, back in 2013. So we go from $178,000 to this past year's budget where we uh, came a total of $2,108,000 uh, that we're putting out, you know, to the county, to different nonprofits for a total of 52 different nonprofits. Plus we've created, and I know many of you are aware of this through our uh, process, uh, three different levels. Uh, you know, our regular funding that we do annually, but also what we call vendor status and then social impact. And all those, uh, if you are unaware of that, you can go to the finance department and, and look for um, uh, outside agency funding uh, and nonprofit funding, and it will give you the criteria to fit into all of those. Um, and none of that even touches the what we've come into recently in the last 18 months with CARES Act funding, uh, all related to the uh, COVID as well as a ARPA, a ARPA money, uh, of which we've put uh, close to $5 million out on the street, uh, funding different nonprofits and uh, community organizations. Uh, the problem with that is not the problem, but it's only, it's one-time money, and so we won't have that year over year. But uh, the county has really made a strong effort uh, to get money out into our nonprofit sector. And just by the listing of that, and I, and I know that I didn't touch on many of you right here, but just, um, I, I tried to give you an example of how wide our net is these days. Uh, and a lot of it, though, has to do with you here in this room now reaching back the other direction. Um, if you're not aware of our annual funding, um, again, please go to uh, you know, nhcgov.com, it's our, our website, and uh, again, the finance department. The applications for funding uh, opened in November and they close ironically on January 10th. If you have not uh, you know, applied for this year, for goodness gracious, uh, jump on it and just go into that website. And they also, we have a couple of terrific people. Michelle Daniels is one of them uh, in our finance department uh, who is kind of oversees this program right now, outside funding. Uh, give her a call. You know, don't think, oh gosh, I don't want to bother. She's, she will call you back, I promise. And if you want to get in on that funding and you haven't so far, call her up and say, hey, I know it's short, what do I need to do? And she will give you great guidance on how to steer your application uh, to put it in the best light possible. Uh, and I would recommend everybody in this room, if you haven't, do it. Uh, this year, because of a lot of the outside funding uh, coming in from the federal and the state, we got a lot of money, uh, and it's not that you know we're not going to throw it around. You got to put forward a, a good application uh, and and show that you have some credentials. You can't just you know start up a nonprofit. I know all of you know that, and but some people try to you know a one person only kind of nonprofit and try to apply for funding and haven't been in business for more than you know six months. That's not going to work. But if you've had a nonprofit for more than a year and you've got a program that will you know, help in our community apply for some of that money and um, and get the advice. But you gotta do it quick. Today is the sixth, am I right? Yeah. 
Fifth. Five days. So I think that's what, like next Monday or something. Yeah, David. Yeah, I just want to repeat something you just said. Yes. For everybody, we got a lot of money. That's what that just came out of your mouth. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're all repeat. fundraisers, obviously, and we're always looking for capacity. That's our version of what you just said. Um, so that that's fantastic. And uh, again, just I thought that bared repeating. <laughs> Thank you, David. Yeah, Janine. So I'm kind of on the other end. I'm with the county. Mm -hmm. So Rob, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the constraints and what percentage of our county budget? goes to mandated services that we have to provide and what percentage goes to more like the quality of life? Yeah, oh dear. Because I think most people don't understand that. Oh yeah, uh, this last year's budget uh, came in around $458 million. Uh, about you know, at least 25% of that uh, went straight to the schools uh, and will continue to go there, so just right off the top. And then there are the different departmental that are already penned out so that when you start cutting it down, the amount of discretionary funding, which I think is what you're getting at, yep. Janine, is very small. In the certainly less than two, uh, I mean, say less than 5% of the overall budget goes there. Again, it's only been through uh, advocacy and you know, pushing and pushing, also setting up that uh, committee that would uh, kind of act as a filter so that we get whatever project is applied for through the outside agency and nonprofit funding that we know is you know, not legitimate, but it, you know, it, it really will have an impact. That helps kind of narrow the focus down so that we can make the best use of the limited funds that we have, um, but you know, trying always to lever uh, leverage more money for that. Uh, so there's a, a tension you put it there, and I, again, I've been a strong advocate, the only because the great work that I know happens from nonprofits every day in our community uh, to not only quality of life, but basic services. Um, I know, Lauren, your organization is uh, one that is incredible. I, I don't know what we do without you, uh, you know, with domestic violence. And the uh, uh, same thing is true for the Carousel Center. And I don't want to just focus on, on a couple of them, but. Uh, certainly uh, warm after uh, Hurricane Florence and the work that they've been doing uh, in doing rehabilitation. Uh, this is, you know, in my mind, it's all critical work that needs to be done in the county. It's not discretionary, it's like important work. Yeah, and I would include in that uh, the Historic Wilmington Foundation, which sounds, you know, odd, but uh, you do incredibly important work that has uh, influence in our downtown area there that, uh, you know, stabilizes uh, you know, home prices uh, increases the value uh, and also attracts people in by the work that you do. So you can't just say, oh, geez, they're a feel-good organization, you know, and they uh, put plaques on houses. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to pick on you, but, you know, <laughs> uh, we do but I just... On <laughs> but they are a feel-good organization. <laughs> I think you understand what I'm getting yeah, at there. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, the funding is very limited. It's a small percentage. And that answer your question, Janine? Yeah, I did, did, did yeah, I just more did to more it? one to educate. Yeah. Um, because so many people look at that large budget yeah. and don't understand what mandated services, how much of that county budget is mm -hmm. has to go towards the sheriff's department, health and human services, mm -hmm. all of those mandated services from the state. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Janine, for bringing that out. Real fast, can you repeat the name of the individual that uh, could Michelle Daniels. Michelle Daniels, thank you so much. Yeah, she works under Lisa Wurzbacher. Lisa Wurzbacher is our uh, chief financial officer. Okay. And again, uh, available through nhcgov.com finance department. Thank you. And it's under the news category in the finance department navigation. And you can see the um, press release with the um, the, uh, the links mm -hmm. on where to apply and what to process. And I think it's important to note, um, don't hesitate to ask. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you've got a need, um, if you've got a project, I mean, don't hesitate to call us. You can call us personally or call the, the offices and, um, you know, someone will try to help you get what you need. Um, what we do in the city, um, there's a three-year process 
you know, we kind of like um, take an organization in. I think we fund at least 32 different nonprofit organizations, and we fund them for a three-year cycle because what we found is that if you give a person the money for just, like, say, a, a year, it takes them that long to get, get their feet on the ground and start working. So we, we fund them for at least three years. Um, but Rob mentioned something that I, you guys need to make sure you understand is that you've got to be um, creditable. You know, you, you've got, if you're saying I'm working with 45 kids, then you got to be working with 45 kids. But you can't be working with the 45 kids that the Boys and Girls Club are working with and they're just the same 45. You follow what I'm saying? Um, so those are some of the things that um, are some of the drawbacks. The other thing that we do, and I'm sure the county does as well, is that we'll help you with your application. You know, we'll, we're, we're being putting into a process where we can help nonprofits become 501c3s. So that that's always usually one of the barriers that um, stops them from getting the resources that they have. So that's one of the things I want you to know. Ask, you need to just ask, don't have like that. Are you able, so I know both the city and the county have grant cycles open, and I know Rob and I have just had this conversation. Can you give advice or insight into that application process and perhaps an organization that doesn't check off the box that your grant application has created that we, all of us here, I think, obviously provide a critical need to the city and county residents, but if the application and the, and the box is X, A, B, or C, and maybe we're D, how do we navigate that? Okay, um, I know what we try to do is if we find an organization that's at a D, we try to figure out, okay, what can we do to, to bring you up to get to be a C or a B? The other thing that we try to do is partner you with another group that's already an A or a B, because we don't want to just leave you out there hanging. Um, and there's a there's a committee. I don't know. The, I've only been, I haven't been serving as long as the old man beside me. I mean, <laughs> as long as Rob has been serving, you know. So um, this is actually just my second term, um, and so I'm learning as as we go along. But but I know the goal for us is to basically make sure that anybody that comes to apply. We try to give you the resources that you need to make sure that you will be in a position to apply the next time. But we also believe in partnering, partnership. I would suggest you call like Suzanne, with the city, Suzanne Rogers, or like Michelle. You know, I think that is always, especially as they said, I think everybody's always yeah. willing to kind of help well, and can get creative trying to figure out absolutely. how to do that. Jen, there's also, I know at the county level, we offer this past year, and they're gone now in November, there were two dates for training, where you literally come in and sit down with uh, Michelle Dans or somebody else in the finance department, and they help you walk through your application to try and strengthen it. Yeah. But uh, again, with the short time frame, which we have five days now, make that call. You know, call the finance department and see you know who they steer you to. Uh, and if you have trouble getting through to somebody. I think everybody in this room has my cell phone. And if you don't, <laughs> and, uh, those of you who know me know I you know, answer my calls and uh, I will make sure that you get in touch with the, the right person if you're having trouble. Again, there's a certain urgency. Here we are on Wednesday you know, with a Monday deadline. Uh, you know, and, you know, Jenny, call me you know, if, you, you know, if you need some, some help. You know, we'll make sure that you get in touch with them, the right people. But that uh, kind of in, in your long range calendars, Look at that uh, November, early November date as when we, that's when we traditionally hold those uh, training sessions. They're really uh, helpful. Even if you have applied in the past and been successful or not successful, take the training class. Uh, they'll give you tips on how to you know, refocus your application. Oh, sorry, I want to add one more thing. Clifford said exactly the right thing. Uh, mm -hmm. If you see that your nonprofit is not getting funded, for God's sakes, email, text, or call me or somebody at the commission level or the city council uh, and say, hey, did we fall through the cracks? Why did we fall through the cracks? Um, do not be shy about that. It's part of what I think both of us feel is part of the job. Because uh, a lot of stuff's going on all the time. We don't necessarily focus on on your nonprofit, if we if we we can't help if we don't know about it. I know that sometimes they oh I don't want to bother them or you know etc. No, go the opposite way. Be the squeaky wheel. Why did I not get successful? 
What did we do wrong? Is there a chance that we can reapply? Whatever you want to say, um, but reach out. Okay, I'm going to pivot just a little bit, just because you guys are also, um, you know, work with the economic kind of stability of our community in general and, you know, for-profit um, corporations. Do you have any advice on how we can get more support or partner with local corporations besides just doing their grant application or asking for money? I think my, my, my thought is always, you got to tell your story. You just gotta tell your story. I mean, everywhere you go, you gotta tell your story. Um, because people don't know what you do. Example, I was talking to the lady who does the canine stuff, and she said, she said that we're the only, we're the oldest canine something, something, something in the state. The longest serving service dog organization in the state. The longest serving service dog organization in the state. How many, how, many, how many other service dog organizations can say that in this state? Right? Okay. Tell your story. Man. Um, that's how you get in the room. That's how people hear about you. When you tell your story, your story is what what sells. Your story is what sells. You know? um, so my thought is always just tell your story. Um, I agree with, with, you know, with Clifford, uh, as usual. But uh, another way to go at it is you know, partnerships. Um, those always play well, and not just the single partnerships. You know, taking uh, you know Nourish and C and combining them with Glow or you know another organization. You can reach out to another organization and say, Hey, uh, both of us are headed in the same direction. If we put together a program that combines one or maybe others, believe me, that uh, that application is going to jump to the top. We you know, love to be able to, you know, it doubles, triples the impact, uh, we feel, at the government level of giving money to one idea that brings so many different organizations together. One of the complaints, I'm going to kind of like chomp on myself here a little bit, uh, is that there are so many nonprofits, as Lauren was saying. The last count is over, well over 600 here in, in New Hanover County. That's mm -hmm. huge. And so quite often we get duplication of, you know, so, yeah, you know, all good. But you, there's a point, and then usually I'd say it to my wife or to the dog as I'm kicking the furniture. I said, "Why can't some of these people get together and come forward?" And of course, that's you know I just described the United Way, which is what they've tried to do and act as one voice for you know a series of uh, good organizations. So it, um, anytime you can partner up with another nonprofit is is a real positive, and I know catches the eye. Of people that catches my eye. So. Awesome. Okay, and to kind of wrap up, um, what else can either of you share with us about the work being done around the region and how we all might be able to help? Um, is it being more involved? We need to make sure our mission stays strong and then vital in the county and the city. I know you said tell our story. Do you have any other updates that's going on in the region? Or? Well, the mayor always said, um, Wilbur is a great place to live, and it's a good time to be here. It really is. Um, and with the pandemic, um, it's kind of taught us a number of things. You know, a number of things. Like for example, um, you mentioned this is the first time you've met in what two years. Okay, just the idea of being able to get together. Um, I think that you take advantage of every opportunity you get. You know, take advantage of every opportunity you get. Um, Rob is absolutely right. You got to partner. I mean, partner with each other. Um, tell your story. Keep telling your story, and keep being consistent. I mean, that's those are the things I would tell you. We're in a uh, strange position, both the city and the county. Uh, but our focus on the county issues are dealing with growth. Uh, everybody in this room knows we've got explosive growth. Uh, even during the pandemic, what we're seeing happening here. You know, predictions as much as 100,000 people moving into our area. So, as you're looking forward, you know, and how you're developing your own nonprofit, something that uh, would help us address uh, managing that growth, whether it's in housing affordability, uh, transportation needs, uh, 
outdoor spaces, open spaces, preservation of spaces. You know, uh, you can look on the map of New Hanover County and see that the north part of the county is the last frontier. That's it. We're not making any, uh, any more land in, in New Hanover County. And you know, if you kind of push away the clutter, it boils down to the number of people and the amount of space that we have. So any focus that you could bring in your department or your organization that addresses one portion of that kind of growth, I'll be really thankful for. And again, I encourage you to reach out to me personally, or other commissioners, but you know, personally, uh, and say, hey, look, we have an idea for an initiative uh, that will help more affordable housing, or will help uh, get people transported from point A to point B, or help create jobs at a, a certain level that pay uh, more than $15 an hour. I am all ears, believe me, and will do everything I can to help move that forward. Or you know, how we can develop and use our parks better. This is what Janine does every day uh, in trying to figure it out. And uh, I'll just take one moment of privilege if you haven't been to Longleaf Park uh, in any time in the last you know, two months, for gosh sakes, go give it a shot. You, your eyes will pop out of your head the improvements they've made. And they just do a fantastic job. And I know many of you go to the uh, Enchanted Airly, uh, their Airly Gardens, talk no, about no. a great, no. you know, I'm yeah. sorry. It's too soon, Ron. Too soon. Ah, keep still taking lights down. Yeah, uh, you're right, it might be, uh, but it's, uh, it's a fantastic amenity. And you know, let's not forget where we're sitting here today. And David, I, I took a careful note of what you're saying. I, I'm, I'm curious as to why this building, the Arboretum is what I'm talking about, yeah. is our, you know, the county's the great bill. hidden gem. gem. It's uh, you know, open 364 days a year, I believe it is. Uh, and it is terribly underutilized. Uh, and it's, you know, we're making great strides, but it is fantastic. If you haven't walked in the back there, Lloyd and Singleton has really brought you know, new energy and life you know, to this uh, here. So there's, um, yeah, there's a lot we have to offer. Uh, but if you can, you know, again, focus your, your organization or a portion of your organization or a single program towards addressing any of those needs that we have in the county, uh, I, I think that will be a winner. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any questions? I don't really know anything we've done specifically. Um, I know that we are um, working on making sure, like, trying to keep people off the street, you know, the homeless, um, depending on what some of our veterans find themselves there. But um, I don't know of anything specifically that we've, uh, we've set aside for veterans. Uh, the county has a, a veterans um, department, uh, and uh, it's small, I mean, there's you know, three people that are in it, but that they basically steer uh, veterans who are in need you know, to you know, uh, other organizations you know, where they are to act as a kind of a clearinghouse. A lot, of course, we're really lucky here in New Hanover County to have a, a veterans hospital over there by the, the airport. I mean, it really is unique for us. Of course, everything's gotten totally wacky during COVID about you know, people are hesitant to go and seek out some of these. But it's a real growth sector for all the reasons that you mentioned uh, of you know, North Carolina, especially Eastern North Carolina. Uh, it attracts a lot of uh, veterans who are, you know, are out of the active military. Uh, I think the numbers that I last saw 16,000 um, veterans here in New Hanover County alone. 
uh, that are here, and a large number of them need a variety of services, and oddly enough, they still look towards Fayetteville uh, or Jacksonville uh, for their services instead of you know putting the pressure on here. So that's what I mean by the real growth sector is there, there could be some serious advocacy done at the county level to focus our attention uh, towards it. I know you do great work, Bethany and Jen, uh, and, but you're a uh, really kept secret at this point. Uh, so advocating for yourselves, but in veterans overall, I, I think it's a, a really important thing that we could be, be do do more for. So we just want to thank you so much for your time and for your advice and um, so you know that work with us. So let's give them. Um, and, and can I, can I can say two yeah, things. Number one, first of all, my cell phone number is seven five seven. Five three seven two zero one nine. Okay, seven five seven five three seven two zero one nine. And if you call, I'll refer you to Rob. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the last thing I want to share with you this though is um, God gives all of us gifts. All of us have all of us have abilities to do stuff, right? Um, do me a favor. Look at your hands for a second. Look at your left hand. Look at it. I'm a Methodist preacher. You gotta watch. Follow me. Look at your left hand, okay? And say to yourself, I've got gifts. I've got gifts. You do. And and I want to encourage you not to give up on your gifts. Not to give up on what you've been called to do. Okay? Because you all have gifts. But also as you look at that same hand, you notice that in between there's some gaps. You notice that? Because there, there are certain things I can't do. I mean, there are a number of things I'd love to do, but there are really some things I just can't do. So the way God kind of uniquely made the world and stuff like this, take your left hand and hold it up like this for a second. And if you're comfortable, reach over to your neighbor and take your gifts and fill in their gaps. Aww. Got it? Aww. Got it? Okay. You got it? And so that, that's what we're talking about. We're really talking about doing what you're good at doing, but then taking your good gifts and meeting somebody else's needs. And they're taking their gifts, gifts and meeting your needs. Um, that's why we encourage you to partner. That's why I encourage you to um, don't give up on what you do, man. You've been called to do what you do and it's needed and you're making a difference. And so I was told the assignment was to give you a pat on the back. We applaud you. <laughs> <laughs> Could I, I mean, add to that, for those of you who don't have my cell number, uh, <laughs> area code 910 619 2464. Operators standing by. <laughs> uh, and I'd, I'd just like to, you know, again, piggyback on Clifford's uh, message. Uh, I, we all thank you for the work that you do, and I know it feels thankless uh, a lot of the time. It feels like you're constantly out there with your hands out, you know, saying, can I get, can I get? Uh, don't think that way. Uh, you're, you are doing the heavy lifting in, throughout our, our community. We cannot be as good as we are now or in the future without your work. You are truly doing the, you know, the hard work for all of us, uh, and we respect you. Uh, and uh, again, encourage you, as you heard from Clifford, Please reach out. If you feel like you've hit, you know, the bottom of the well, or that you've hit a stone wall with, you know, dealing with your government or another uh, agency of some sort, pick up the phone and call. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't solve everything, but sometimes uh, we can put you in touch with other people who can find another, another path to success in what you're doing. So don't ever feel like, oh gosh, I don't want to bother them. And that's why we got elected to be bothered. You know, and uh, yeah, you're uh, our support system. So uh, please feel free to call. 
to the Middle East a year and a half ago after your newborn came, that child is now walking and talking, and they don't know who you are. Right? So things, things significant like that that we're doing. Um, I know that we're always working with the city. We're always working with the county. Y'all know James Jarvis, I assume. Sure. Oh, yeah. um, he works way harder than me. Um, that's, that's kind of a joke, but never mind. Um, <laughs> reach out to James. He's a resource. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, we're here to kick off the new year and and to go along with with your metaphor about you know locking hands. I think we all can work together to do more too. Uh, rather than, you know, it's not always about the dollars at the end of the day. There's a lot of mission uh, connection that we all have together. So uh, I think we should, I'm just saying, moving forward in the year, maybe we can all make a, a push to explore each other's missions a little bit more. I think you might be surprised at how we can all help each other. Great, thank you. Anybody else have an announcement? Um, I have one. We have. Um, Vanessa Valance has a director of development position posted. It's on the um, katefeargives.org website. It's also just kind of a reminder, if any of you have any kind of positions or internships, if you're a member, you can post jobs on the Job Center for free as well, too. But we don't have any questions. Great. One more plug. Um, I had the joy of using K-9 for service this summer. Um, my husband and I got our four-year-old Golden Doodle certified as a therapy dog. Um, and one of my motivations was to help my fellow county employees and also other nonprofits. So if you have staff who um, could use a visit by a therapy dog, please reach out to me. I get community service hours through the county, so I can use that time to come to a staff meeting um, because we've all been through so much in the past few years and have been asked to do so much in such different ways that maybe a visit from a dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we will see you um, next month. Just keep an eye out for emails and Facebook for parking details and topics and all of that. Nice program. Yeah.